is Chloe Gym Day, and you know what that means. Back squats, fitness model style. Thank God for the BSN and bodybuilding.com sent me the great BCAAs yesterday. They're currently in my system. This is actually my favorite top from bodybuilding.com. It's the parachute tank. It's older school, but it's still available on their website. I like it because it accommodates my Terry's majors. Can you see them? How about now? This is Kyle. I met him at a strong fit assessment workshop a couple months ago. And we decided to have a leg extravaganza session together. Kicking things off with lumbar pelvic stabilization exercises. Why? Well, I firmly believe that proximal stability allows for distal mobility. In other words, if you can properly stabilize your spine and pelvis in space, it will allow for less peripheral chaos. The goal of this exercise is not to fall off the foam roller. So that means we need to tap into our deep transverse abs so that we can stabilize our spine and pelvis in space. So you can see that Kyle keeps falling off on the same side. So he's getting immediate feedback from this exercise that there is a problem that needs to be addressed. And I love this exercise because it applies strong fits three rules of exercise, which is that the exercise must show you your problem, give you feedback, and fix the problem. If you're new to following me, you can also follow me on Instagram. I post my daily workouts there. Now, if you do watch my workouts, you may have wrongly assumed that I was a gymnast from an early age, which is absolutely not true. I learned handstands, all the calisthenic movements you see, pole fitness, the splits, in my 40s. So you're probably wondering, how did she pull that off? Well, I've spent a lot of time studying human movement. I have a degree in physiotherapy. I have various certifications ranging from strong fit to heck, I'm about to get Pilates certified. So I understand exactly what it takes to overcome because I'm willing to experiment on myself and figure out what works and what doesn't work. The biggest mistake I see when people want to improve their shoulder and hip mobility is trying to force the arms and legs into extreme positions. And there's a reason why your nervous system is like, oh, hells no, we're not going to allow this. But then the ego steps in and you try and force your legs and arms into more extreme positions, which results in compensatory patterns and injury. So I teach my Strength Academy members a safe way to go about improving shoulder and hip mobility. And I show them a series of exercises they can do to improve their proximal strength and stability. Because that's going to give your nervous system consent to start moving your arms and legs through pain-free ranges of motion using the correct muscles. And that's how you make peripheral gains. Set it, remember it, and then move distal. <laughs> it's terrible marketing. Back to leg day. So first, activation of the core. Then we're getting started with calves. The goal being to feel the entire internal torque chain light up. So calves to inner hamstrings to glute max. Can you see my external obliques exploding out the side of my top? Look at the way I'm gripping the top of the machine to activate my pecs, short head biceps, and teres majors. I'm being mindful of going through the full range of motion. A lot of people have a tendency not to go all the way down. Obviously, respect your current mobility, but don't cheat it either. So 10 reps in neutral, 10 toes in, 10 toes out. The knee extension machine. We're doing this in internal torque unilaterally to target the inner quad, otherwise known as the VMO, vastus medialis oblique, or the teardrop muscle. We're doing this with the toes pointed and notice that we are focusing on stabilizing the core. I like to hang on to the handles so that it really does help me keep my spine and pelvis as stable as possible. And yes, I spend more time on the weaker right VMO by doing extra sets on that side. Next, knee flexion. I'm going to show you two ways, seated or prone lying on your tummy. Now notice I do it with my toe pointed in both scenarios, and that's because pointing the toe will render the gas stroke actively insufficient. It knocks it out, so that way you have no choice but to do this exercise using the inner hamstring, which is the goal. We want to target the inner hamstrings. So we want to make sure that the core is stabilized, so we want to tuck the pelvis, so no arching at the low back. You can also do this on the prone hamstring curl, which is actually more difficult because now the hip is extended. 
So this causes extra shortening of the hamstring. Now, a two-joint muscle, which the hamstring is, cannot contract maximally across both joints at the same time. Since this is the shortest possible position, it doesn't lead to high force production. So that's why it's harder to do the prone hamstring curl, especially if you point your toe, because that renders the gastroc actively insufficient, compared to doing it seated or with the toe dorsiflexed. Notice when I reach failure how I don't quit, but rather I initiate auto-assisted reps using the other leg to facilitate the concentric contraction, and then I can slowly lower eccentrically, banging out a few more reps, cheater's reps, to reach true failure. This is a technique I learned from studying Dorian Yates, a six-time Mr. Olympian. Actually, the concept of HIIT training one working set to failure, the concept of the path of most resistance, was created by Arthur Jones, the creator of Nautilus equipment. It's really important that you know that my socks have my cat's face all over them. See that? It's being, can you see him? How about now? Kyle's doing cannonball leg press because it looks like he's about to do a cannonball in the pool. We have a low foot placement with the heels off the platform because this is gonna target the VMOs. He's using this to cue to torque internally at the hips. The focus right now is keeping the VMOs on. So I've been giving him a tactile cue, PNF, so that he will keep them on. Notice he's moving in slow motion. The goal is to keep the tension. Also notice he's tucked his pelvis under. So he's activated his pelvic floor and he's using his low abs. That's hard work, isn't it? He can't even speak. Don't forget to breathe. Sarah, how did you learn pistol squats? Well, by doing Pilates. And this is something I invented called Pilates bodybuilding. So you can see that this is basically a pistol squat, except it's in a seated leg press machine. Now the key point is that this is all about core stabilization. So I'm using my core to keep my spine and pelvis still, which means if I take my hands off, my pelvis doesn't start shifting everywhere. I'm using my low abs to get that leg up in the air, not the psoas. And the reason why I can fling my leg up in the air is because I can stabilize my spine and pelvis using my core. Finally, the hack squats. That's why I wanted to go to this specific gym in Toronto. So, this is internal torque. I'm facing forward. And this was actually Dorian Yates' favorite way to hypertrophy his VMOs, the inner quads. So notice my foot placement. Just like with the cannonball leg press, I place my feet lower on the platform so that it emphasizes more of the VMO. But you could also have a higher foot placement, and this is going to still target the VMO, but it'll also target more your inner hamstrings and glute max. And play around with the foot position and notice where you feel things more based on where you place your feet. Don't be afraid to experiment with your foot placement, whether that's placing it more superiorly or inferiorly, more externally rotated, internally rotated, wider stance, narrower stance. Because by experimenting, you'll figure out what position helps you generate maximal torque, which allows you to best feel the muscles you're trying to feel. Now I've turned around in the machine, but I'm still doing internal torque. Can you see how I am hinging? So I'm maintaining a posterior pelvic tilt using the glute max inner hamstrings VMOs. Oh, this is what I came for. Reverse, hack squat, external torque. Look at that booty. So this is targeting the glutei med muscles, you know, the outer butt muscles, the outer hamstrings and outer quads. Notice the arch in the low back. It's an anterior pelvic tilt, which is what we want for external torque. Watch the left VMO so it shuts off and the whole left leg swoops out there. Notice the right leg is fasciculating, so we've found some areas of weakness. Notice lower foot placement so that we can target the VMOs. Now we've triaged the VMO and you can see the knee is swooping out less. Okay, watch this one. This one's his best one. Much better. I love helping people learn how to move better because I know what it's like not to move well and to be in pain and to stagnate. There's nothing more soul crushing. Now I do give a lot of information away for free, 
But the problem with that is that it's trained people to devalue me, to dehumanize me. Don't misconstrue, I absolutely love what I do. I love being an online fitness influencer. And I'm really grateful for my social media platforms. I'm grateful that you're here even listening to me. And for the people who've been here for, gosh, over 11 years with me, thank you. I think that of all the people, you're the ones who I've actually seen this evolution and everything that I have become. And I just want to make it clear that I'm an educator at heart and I will always be here giving you new cool information that you can immediately implement. I just want to make it clear that going forward, I want to work with people who want to level up. Because when I waste my time on people who don't want to level up and they monopolize my time, it prevents me from helping the people who do want to level up. Glutes! So we can do this machine either in IT or ET. I think it's really challenging in IT because everybody wants to arch the low back. And here you can see I was struggling just stabilizing. You can see I'm rotating at the pelvis and spine. So Kyle was cueing me there because sometimes it's hard when there's not a mirror and you can't see yourself. That's why I encourage people to video themselves for biofeedback so you can self-correct. So if you're struggling with that machine, try the Gravitron instead. This position is a lot easier for maintaining lumbopelvic stabilization. You can see my pelvis is tucked posteriorly, then switching it to ET. You can see how I have the arch in the lumbar spine. Hip abduction, you can do this standing or seated. This is external torque, note the arch body position, targeting the posterior fibers of the glutei med, responsible for hip abduction when you're in a deeply flexed hip position. If you turn around, you can see now I'm in a hollow body position, internal torque. So now I'm targeting, in my opinion, the internal torque fibers of the glutei med, the anterior fibers, which work together with the posterior fibers to help you stabilize your pelvis during gait. So if these glute med fibers are weak, that would explain why you have a Trendelenburg sign, in my opinion. And then of course, hip adduction, bringing the legs together. So one of the biggest concerns I'm seeing with my academy members is how do you know how to manage your time? What's the most important things you should be working on with your training in order to improve? So I approach this exactly the same way I approached dentistry. I would tell my dental patients, okay, the building is burning down and we have to evacuate and I only have time to treat one of your chief complaints. What's it gonna be? So that's how you go about triaging the most important thing. So for example, this week, I'm like, what's up with my left mid-back erector? It feels like shit. Why is this even happening? And I realized, oh, it's because I'm actually not consistently firing my left glute max when I'm moving. And so because that gives out, then I end up compensating with my left mid-back erector, which hurts. And the thing is, pain is an amazing feedback tool. You know you're not doing something properly if you get pain. So you can use that to your advantage, like classical conditioning, like, oh, I didn't fire the glute max because that hurt. So it trains you pretty quickly to learn how to fire the glute max. You're like, Sarah, how would I even have known that, you know, the back pain was because my left glute max wasn't firing? Well, I don't expect you to know that. I don't expect my academy members to know that. That just comes from years of education and experience. And that's the whole purpose of being in my academy because I can watch people move and immediately see, I see dead muscles. Remember that movie, I see dead people, I see dead muscles. So I can immediately pick up on that and then give a plan going forward of various exercises that they can work on and they can post every single day and we just take it day by day. And I realize not everybody wants to do this online and I realize some people are willing to travel to me and that's why Gus and I, Gus and I are the only two Canadian strong fit coaches in the world. We're offering a live workshop this July 27th and 28th in Toronto, 2019. And we're actually offering one-on-one -on -one assessments. And if you really wanna pick our brains, master classes, you can click the link up there to see all of the different options. But if you wanna work with me in person, that's your chance. I'm also going to be opening up other opportunities for people to be trained by me or assessed by me in person. So look for that also coming this 2019.
just like to give a huge shout out to my sponsors, BSN and Bodybuilding.com because they are generously sponsoring my workshop and providing all attendees with awesome swag bags. Let me tell you, those Chris bars to die for. And of course, there's going to be a big team dinner. Oh my God, we had so much fun last year. I can't wait for this. And my mom will be there. Leg press machine, so we can do this in external torque or internal torque. Basically, you can take any exercise and you can either do it in ET or IT. So in ET, I go bilaterally targeting the glutei I made. That's what I'm thinking about, especially by week one on the left side, and my outer hamstrings and outer quads. Oh, you cannot take the fitness model out of the strong fitter. So here you can, oh, look at my Terry's major. You can see I'm doing internal torque, and I do that unilaterally. And as my colleague Mike Rashid always says, if you don't know who that is, you should Google him. You can't bullshit yourself when you work unilaterally. I want you to also play with the foot position, lower, obviously targeting VMO. When you place it higher, you'll feel it more in the inner hamstring and glute max. Sissy squats to target the VMOs. I was taught these by Julian Smith, the quad guy. Look him up. Oh, name dropping. The intent here is to fire the VMOs, the inner quads, throughout the entire movement. So you don't want to bounce back up. So you want constant tension, and you can even put a yoga block between the knees to give you that cue to torque internally at the hips, corkscrew inwards. Now, you can do this with a deficit as well when you get more advanced, or you can even use the empty barbell on the Smith machine. This is a closed kinetic chain exercise, even though it probably looks hellacious to you. It's much more friendly on the knees than doing the knee extension machine, which is open kinetic chain. So a closed kinetic chain exercise has less shearing force on the knee joint. So I used to have severe knee pain, and this is how I chose to strengthen my VMO because the knee extension machine was too painful for me at first. So I make it clear that when I first started learning this, I was very partial weight bearing. And in this particular video right now, you can see I'm holding on to the sides of the Smith machine for support. I tried to demonstrate it with the empty barbell, but I'm not ready yet. You don't want to be piking at the hips. This should literally look like me extension machine, except you're on the floor. Jump rope. This is internal torque. If you watch closely, you'll see me banging out some triple unders. So this is, as I said, internal torque, and I do not suffer from jumping incontinence, and I know a lot of women do, so they don't want to jump rope, but that is rectifiable. It's a sign there's an imbalance between the ET and IT core musculature. So one thing I do emphasize a lot of in my strength academy is the importance of activating the pelvic floor and strengthening that, and that will rectify the problem. This is actually the newly released Sarah Solomon Buddy Lee pink jump rope. He put the patented swivel bearings on it, so it's so much better than the first edition. So I'll put the link below so you can check that out. And definitely try jump rope. It makes you think fast, and it even prevents Alzheimer's disease. I have a photo shoot coming up for bodybuilding.com in about two weeks. So I thought to myself, self, you should probably start taking this seriously, and now it's time to do meal prep. You want to see? Who wants to get shredded with me? Whoa, freak out, meal prep. Green beans, this is great for those moments when you feel like you need something. Just snack on these. Notice I've portioned everything already into containers. So this is tuna with cucumber and tomato and big ass salads. I actually don't like salad dressing, so that just saves me a ton of calories. Now, historically, I always get super lean with shrimp. So that's what I'm going with. And I love, love mushrooms. And then um, my fruit of choice would be some blueberries and some grapefruit. And of course, whey protein. I love the German chocolate cake. It's delicious. Let's do this. Okay, baby Jessica, come on, come on, big boy. Good boy, you did it. Coco, how are you gonna get down? Oh, use your pelvic floor. Aren't you adorable? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna go try it? Go on. The other thing I wanted to talk about is ego and knowing when it's time to ditch your ego and start making better choices for your body, mentally and physically. Now, I think this is something that obviously comes with maturity or when you hit rock bottom. When I was in my 20s and 30s, 
I was willing to do whatever it would take in order to, you know, lift the heavy weights and to get as lean as possible. And it didn't matter to me the damage that would inflict on my body physically or mentally. But then when you get in your 40s, you start to realize, oh, this stuff probably isn't a good idea anymore. And you start to realize that you're doing yourself a massive disservice for your future self. Because if you feel that bad in your 40s, how do you think you're gonna feel when you're in your 60s and 70s? I had to hit rock bottom before I was able to realize, oh, it's time to quit cold turkey, everything I'm currently doing and learn a new way. And that's how my brand was born. My brand is basically how to go about unfucking yourself with your diet and your training. All I wanted to do was no longer feel like I had fat phobia and I didn't want to feel controlled by food anymore. And I didn't want to always be fluctuating with my weight anymore. All I wanted was to be able to exercise without hurting my knee or my back or my shoulder. And you know, it's beyond my wildest dreams that I've even learned things like pole fitness or the splits or handstands. I mean, I couldn't even go up and down the stairs or squat to the toilet without severe pain. So I really do hope that I can give you hope and make it possible for you to believe that you can become something that you think you can't. So thank you for the opportunity for giving me to do this for a living. There's nothing else I'd rather do. I wanna thank you for subscribing and for watching my videos all the way to the end. I know I talk a lot and I appreciate that you invest your time in me. So until next vlog, don't do anything stupid. <laughs>